Debbie Reynolds was a beloved actress, singer, and dancer who made a significant impact in the entertainment industry. Born in Texas in 1932, Reynolds rose to fame in the late 1940s with her debut in the film Three Little Words. She went on to star in numerous classic films, including Singing in the Rain, The Affairs of Dobie Gillies, and Tammy and the Bachelor. Reynolds' talent and hard work earned her a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award nomination. She was also a successful businesswoman, opening her own dance studio and museum dedicated to Hollywood memorabilia. Despite facing personal and professional challenges throughout her career, Reynolds remained a positive and resilient figure in Hollywood. She was known for her sharp wit, kindness, and generosity, and her legacy continues to inspire aspiring performers today. Reynolds' son, Todd Fisher, once said, she was one of the most positive people I've ever known. She always believed that things were going to work out. This optimism and determination were hallmarks of Reynolds' career and personal life making her a true icon in the entertainment industry. Debbie Reynolds was a beloved actress, known for her work in films like Singing in the Rain and the unsinkable Molly Brown. She was also a singer, dancer, and humanitarian. Reynolds' career spanned over six decades, and she remains an enduring symbol of the golden age of Hollywood. Do you remember the first time you saw Debbie Reynolds in a movie or on television? What qualities do you think have made her such an everlasting symbol of the industry? We would love to hear your stories and memories about this classic star. Tell us about the first time you recognized Debbie Reynolds or share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to her. Throughout her life, Debbie Reynolds faced many challenges and triumphs. From her humble beginnings in Texas to her rise to stardom, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts about this iconic actress. So keep watching this video to learn more about the life and legacy of Debbie Reynolds. We can't wait to hear your thoughts and memories in the comments below. Debbie Reynolds was born Mary Frances Reynolds in 1932 in El Paso, Texas. Her family moved to California during the Great Depression, where she grew up in a modest household. Reynolds' mother, Maxine, encouraged her to participate in local theater and talent shows. At the age of 16, Reynolds won the Miss Burbank Beauty Contest, which caught the attention of Warner Brothers studio executives. Reynolds' early exposure to the entertainment industry came through her participation in local theater and her victory in the Miss Burbank Contest. She was soon signed to a contract with Warner Brothers and began taking acting and singing lessons. One of Reynolds' key mentors was legendary actress and dancer Judy Garland. Garland took Reynolds under her wing and gave her advice on how to navigate the ups and downs of Hollywood. Reynolds has credited Garland with teaching her how to be a professional and how to handle the pressures of fame. Another significant influence on Reynolds' career was legendary filmmaker, Jean Kelly. Kelly directed and co-starred with Reynolds in the classic musical, Singing in the Rain. Kelly's demanding but supportive approach helped Reynolds to develop her dancing skills and become a triple threat in the entertainment industry. Reynolds' upbringing and early experiences in the entertainment industry shaped her into a versatile and resilient performer. Her natural talent, combined with the guidance of mentors like Judy Garland and Gene Kelly, helped her to become one of the most beloved actresses and singers of her time. Debbie Reynolds was a renowned actress, singer, and dancer. She began her film career in 1950 with Three Little Words. In 1952, she starred in Singing in the Rain, which is considered one of the greatest movie musicals of all time. Reynolds received an Academy Award nomination for her role in the unsinkable Molly Brown in 1964. Some of Reynolds' other notable films include Tammy and The Bachelor, How the West Was Won, The Singing Nun, and Charlotte's Web, where she provided the voice of Charlotte. For those new to Debbie Reynolds' work, Singing in the Rain is a must-watch. It showcases her exceptional singing, dancing, and acting skills. The unsinkable Molly Brown is another great film that highlights her comedic timing and dramatic range. Overall, Debbie Reynolds' filmography is a testament to her talent and enduring legacy in Hollywood. Her performances continue to resonate with audiences today, and she will always be remembered as a captivating and versatile actress. Debbie Reynolds, a legendary actress and singer, discovered her passion for performing at a young age. Raised in a low-income family in Texas, she found solace in the world of entertainment. At 16, she won a talent contest 
which led to her being discovered by a talent scout. This pivotal moment set her on a path to start. Reynolds' big break came when she was chosen to play the lead in the 1952 musical Singin' in the Rain, alongside Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Despite having no formal dance training, she worked tirelessly to keep up with her experienced co-stars. Her determination and natural talent shone through, and the film became a classic. Reynolds' passion for performing was fueled by the joy she brought to audiences. She once said, I've been very lucky in my life, and I've had a lot of fun. I've worked with the greatest people in the business, and I've been able to make people laugh and cry. This desire to connect with and entertain people stayed with her throughout her long and successful career. Debbie Reynolds showcased her talent in singing in the rain as Kathy Selden, despite having no professional dancing experience. Gene Kelly took it upon himself to teach her, just as he had done with Frank Sinatra. Reynolds' background in gymnastics proved beneficial in her dance training. In addition to her acting and dancing, Reynolds lent her voice for a scene in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. The scene features Reynolds singing, which was recorded specifically for the film. This was facilitated by Terry Gilliam's friendship with Carrie Fisher, Reynolds' daughter. Reynolds' dedication was also evident in What's the Matter with Helen. She drove Shelley Winters to work daily. One morning, they picked up a woman on Santa Monica Boulevard who was trying to hitch a ride in a nightgown. When questioned, the woman replied that she thought she was late. This anecdote highlights Reynolds' kindness and willingness to help others. Debbie Reynolds, born Mary Frances Reynolds, faced many challenges in her early life and career. Despite growing up in poverty during the Great Depression, she remained determined to become an actress. At the age of 16, she won the Miss Burbank Beauty Contest, which helped her secure a contract with Warner Brothers. However, her journey in Hollywood was not easy. She was often given minor roles and faced skepticism from industry professionals who doubted her talent and potential. Financial struggles were also a constant concern for Reynolds. She once said, I went from being a young girl with a dream to being a young woman with a responsibility to earn a living. Despite these obstacles, Reynolds remained resilient and resourceful. She took on various jobs, such as singing and dancing in nightclubs, to supplement her income. She also continued to hone her craft, taking acting and singing lessons to improve her skills. Reynolds' breakthrough role came in 1952 when she starred in Singing in the Rain alongside Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Despite having no formal dance training, she worked tirelessly to keep up with her more experienced co-stars. Her hard work paid off, and the film became a classic, solidifying her status as a Hollywood star. Throughout her career, Reynolds faced numerous challenges, including divorce, financial difficulties, and health issues. However, she remained a force to be reckoned with, continuing to work in film, television, and theater until her death in 2016. Her resilience and determination serve as an inspiration to aspiring actors and actresses everywhere. Debbie Reynolds played the role of Kathy Selden in the classic film Singing in the Rain, alongside Gene Kelly. Initially, Judy Garland, June Allison, and Ann Miller were considered for the part, but they were deemed too old. Jane Powell and Leslie Caron were also briefly considered before Reynolds was ultimately cast. In the film, Don Lockwood, played by Kelly, asks to be dropped off at the intersection of Sunset and Camden in Beverly Hills, an actual location two blocks west of Rodeo Drive and the Beverly Hills Hotel. Reynolds also starred in How the West Was Won as Lilith Prescott, with an impressive cast including John Wayne, Gregory Peck, James Stewart, and Henry Fonda. All five of these actors were included in Quigley Publications' list of top 25 box office draws for 1963, the year the film was released in the U.S. Debbie Reynolds' career was filled with breakthrough moments that showcased her talent and versatility. In 1950, she was just 18 when she was discovered by Warner Brothers and was cast in The Two Mistress Carols alongside screen legends Humphrey Bogart and Barbara Stanwyck. This marked the beginning of her successful film career. One of her most iconic roles was in Singing in the Rain, where she held her own against co-stars Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Her performance in the film was praised by critics and audiences alike, and it remains a classic in Hollywood's golden age. 
Reynolds' tap dancing skills, and comedic timing were on full display, and she quickly became a beloved figure in Hollywood. In 1964, Reynolds received critical acclaim for her performance in The Unsinkable Molly Brown, for which she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Although she didn't win, the nomination further solidified her status as a talented and respected actress. Throughout her career, Reynolds continued to break barriers and challenge herself with various roles. In the 1970s, she starred in her own television show, The Debbie Reynolds Show, and later became a successful cabaret performer. Reynolds' peers, critics, and collaborators have all spoken highly of her impact on the industry. Shirley MacLaine, a close friend and fellow actress, once said, Debbie is a rare and true talent. She has an incredible work ethic and a spirit that is unmatched. Critic Leonard Maltin also praised Reynolds, stating, Debbie Reynolds is a true Hollywood legend. Her contributions to film, television, and theater are immeasurable. Reynolds' breakthrough moments have left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry and have inspired generations of performers. Her talent, versatility, and dedication to her craft have cemented her place as a true Hollywood icon. Debbie Reynolds was born in Texas to parents Raymond, and Maxine Reynolds, who hailed from Texas and Oklahoma, respectively. She is perhaps best known for following in the footsteps of her contemporaries like Doris Day and launching her own sitcom in 1969. However, the debut episode of the series featured an advertisement for cigarettes, which violated one of her contractual stipulations. Reynolds made such a fuss about it that NBC ended up canceling the series. Sadly, Reynolds passed away just one day after her daughter, Carrie Fisher, in 2016. Debbie Reynolds was a renowned actress, singer, and dancer who approached her work with a unique blend of enthusiasm, hard work, and natural talent. She was known for her ability to bring joy and energy to every role and for her commitment to delivering top-notch performances. Reynolds' creative process was characterized by her meticulous attention to detail and her dedication to perfecting her craft. She spent countless hours rehearsing her lines, dance moves, and singing parts, often going above and beyond what was required of her. This level of dedication was reflected in the high quality of her work and helped her to establish a reputation as one of the most reliable and hardworking actresses in Hollywood. One of the things that made Reynolds' style unique was her ability to seamlessly blend different elements of performance. She was equally comfortable singing, dancing, and acting, and often combined these skills in a single performance. This versatility allowed her to take on a wide range of roles and helped her to stand out in a competitive industry. Reynolds' personal experiences and worldview were also reflected in her work. She often drew upon her own life experiences to inform her characters and was known for her ability to bring a sense of authenticity and realism to her roles. At the same time, she was not afraid to take on challenging or controversial topics and use her platform to raise awareness about important social issues. Overall, Debbie Reynolds was a truly unique and talented performer whose contributions to the world of entertainment will be remembered for many years to come. Her ability to bring joy, energy, and authenticity to her work, along with her versatility and dedication to her craft, made her a beloved figure in Hollywood and beyond. In the 1952 film Singin' in the Rain, Debbie Reynolds portrayed Kathy Selden. There's an interesting behind-the-scenes story about the looping sequence where Kathy Selden dubs the dialogue for Lena Lehmann. Contrary to what viewers might think, it's actually Jean Hagen's own voice heard in these scenes as she possessed a beautiful, deep, rich voice. This creates a unique situation where Jean Hagen dubs Debbie Reynolds dubbing Jean Hagen additionally when Debbie Reynolds' character is supposedly dubbing Jean Hagen's singing of Would You? The voice that's heard singing is not Reynolds, but rather that of Betty Noyes, who had a much richer singing voice. Reynolds' hard work on the Good Morning number led to her being carried to her dressing room as she had burst some blood vessels in her feet. Despite her efforts, Jean Kelly opted to dub the sound of her feet in the final cut. An outtake from the film was used in the opening credits of the 1980s series The Fall Guy. In this clip, a stuntman doubling for Gene Kelly misses the car entirely and lands in the street while attempting to jump from the top of a streetcar into the front seat of Debbie Reynolds' Model T. Debbie Reynolds was a prominent figure in the film industry, particularly during Hollywood's golden age. She started her career in the late 1940s 
and quickly became known for her singing, dancing, and acting skills. Reynolds' contribution to the industry is significant, as she starred in many successful films and was a key player in the studio system. One of Reynolds' most notable roles was in the 1952 musical Singing in the Rain, where she showcased her impressive tap dancing skills alongside co-stars Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. The film is now considered a classic and has had a lasting impact on the industry. According to film critic Leonard Maltin, Singing in the Rain is the greatest movie musical ever made, and a lot of that has to do with Debbie Reynolds. Reynolds' influence can also be seen in the way she broke gender norms and paved the way for future actresses. She was one of the few leading ladies who did her own singing and dancing, rather than relying on dubbing or stunt doubles. This helped to challenge the traditional image of the helpless, dependent female character and showed that women could be just as talented and capable as men. Reynolds' impact on the industry is also evident in the way she inspired future generations of performers. Actresses such as Carrie Fisher, Anne Hathaway, and Kristen Chenoweth have all cited Reynolds as a source of inspiration and have spoken about her influence on their careers. In addition to her work in film, Reynolds was also a successful stage actress and singer. She starred in several Broadway productions, including Irene and Annie Get Your Gun, and released several albums throughout her career. In conclusion, Debbie Reynolds was a trailblazer in the film industry, known for her talent, versatility, and contributions to the studio system. Her influence can still be seen today in the way she challenged gender norms and inspired future generations of performers. Debbie Reynolds is best known for her role as Kathy Selden in the classic film Singing in the Rain. At just 19 years old, she commuted to the set from her parents' home, often sleeping on the studio's couch to avoid the long journey that required her to wake up at 400 a.m. and take three buses. Her dedication paid off, and she was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1997. In 1984, Reynolds, along with friends Shelley Winters and Terry Moore, created an exercise video aimed at women of a certain age, which was a more subdued alternative to the high-energy workout videos popular at the time. Reynolds' career spanned several decades, and she made a significant impact in the entertainment industry. Her contributions were recognized with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 16654 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Debbie Reynolds, the famous actress, had a rich personal life that greatly influenced her career. She had a deep love for music and dance, which was evident in her many film roles, Reynolds was also a passionate collector of Hollywood memorabilia, and she opened a museum to showcase her collection. Reynolds was known for her strong work ethic and her dedication to her craft. She believed in treating everyone she worked with fairly and with respect, and she was known for her kindness and generosity on set. Reynolds was also deeply committed to philanthropy. She was involved in numerous charitable organizations throughout her life, including the Thalians, an organization that raises money for mental health causes. Reynolds was also a passionate advocate for children's causes and worked tirelessly to support organizations that help children in need. One of Reynolds' most notable philanthropic efforts was her work with the Hollywood Education and Literacy Program. The program aimed to improve literacy rates among children in the Hollywood area and Reynolds was heavily involved in its development and implementation. Reynolds' personal values and interests were deeply intertwined with her professional life. She loved music, dance, and film, and she used her talents to bring joy to others. At the same time, she was committed to using her platform to make a positive impact in the world. Through her philanthropic efforts and her dedication to fairness and respect, Reynolds left a lasting legacy that continues to inspire and uplift people today. Debbie Reynolds made a memorable appearance on the TV show Will and Grace, playing the character of Bobby Adler, also known as Mommy Adler, in an episode titled The Unsinkable Mommy Adler. This title was a nod to the movie The Unsinkable Molly Brown, in which Reynolds also starred. In the Western film How the West Was Won, Reynolds portrayed Lilith Prescott. Interestingly, she had previously worked with Thelma Ritter, who played Agatha in the same movie, in the Western the second time around the year before. Reynolds had a personal connection to musician Paul Simon, as she was his ex-mother-in-law. These are just a few highlights from Reynolds' extensive career, which spanned many decades, and included a wide variety of roles in both television and film.
Debbie Reynolds left a significant legacy in the acting industry. She was known for her lively performances and versatile acting skills. She starred in many successful movies, such as Singing in the Rain, and was a popular actress in the 1950s and 1960s. Reynolds also made significant contributions to the industry through her work as a singer, dancer, and businesswoman. For those aspiring to follow in her footsteps, Reynolds had some advice. She believed that hard work and dedication were essential to success in the industry. She encouraged aspiring actors to take classes, learn about the craft of acting, and never give up on their dreams. Reynolds also emphasized the importance of being kind and respectful to everyone in the industry, as building positive relationships can lead to more opportunities. In terms of her own future contributions, Reynolds always looked for new ways to use her talents. She opened a dance studio, wrote a memoir, and even started a museum dedicated to Hollywood memorabilia. She believed that there were always new ways to entertain and inspire people, and she was always looking for the next opportunity to do so. In conclusion, Debbie Reynolds was a trailblazer in the acting industry, and her legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors today. By following her advice to work hard, be kind, and always look for new opportunities, anyone can make a meaningful contribution to the industry and leave their own legacy for future generations. In 1975, Debbie Reynolds sold her Beverly Hills mansion, reportedly worth over a million dollars, to industrialist Jim Randall. The mansion later became the venue for Randall's wedding to Marissa Berenson. Reynolds made a brief appearance in the documentary that's entertainment. While performing in the Broadway musical Irene, she can be heard using a slight Irish brogue in the voiceover narration. In the classic film Singin' in the Rain, Reynolds portrayed Kathy Selden. To enhance her voice in the movie, a microphone was hidden in her blouse. During one of the dance numbers, the sound of her heartbeat can be heard, echoing the experience of Lena Lamont in the film. Reynolds' dedication to her craft and attention to detail were crucial in bringing her character to life. Debbie Reynolds was a passionate and innovative actress who left an enduring impact on the entertainment industry. She began her career in the 1950s and quickly became known for her lively spirit and exceptional talent. Over the years, she tackled a variety of roles, showcasing her versatility and commitment to her craft. Reynolds starred in numerous films, including Singing in the Rain, which is still considered a classic today. She also appeared on stage and on television, proving herself to be a true triple threat. Despite facing numerous challenges throughout her career, Reynolds never gave up. She persevered, always pushing herself to be better and to take on new challenges. Reynolds' impact on the entertainment industry is still felt today. She inspired countless other actors and actresses, and her work continues to resonate with audiences around the world. Her story is a powerful reminder of the importance of creativity and perseverance. Even in the face of adversity, Reynolds never lost sight of her passion for performing. She continued to work and to innovate right up until the end of her life. Her legacy is a testament to the power of hard work, dedication, and a little bit of showbiz magic. In the end, Debbie Reynolds' story is a reminder that with creativity, passion, and perseverance, anything is possible. She will always be remembered as a true icon of the entertainment industry, and her impact will continue to be felt for generations to come. Debbie Reynolds is well known for her role as Kathy Selden in the classic musical Singin' in the Rain. The following year, she starred in the affairs of Dobie Gillies, where she showcased her singing talent once again. Many of the costumes from Singin' in the Rain were later acquired by Reynolds, who had a vast collection of original film costumes and props. A green check suit and shoes worn by Donald O'Connor in the film were purchased by Costume World, Inc., and are now on display at the Costume World Broadway Collection Museum in Florida. In the film How the West Was Won, Reynolds played Lilith Prescott and had an interesting experience with director Henry Hathaway, who was known for his colorful language. To curb his swearing, Reynolds started a swear jar, putting coins in every time he cursed. Unfortunately, she ended up losing a significant amount of money. Debbie Reynolds, in the film Susan Slept Here, played a 17-year-old character named Susan Beauregard Landis, though she was already 22 at the time. Her co-star, Dick Powell, was 49, despite his character being only 35 and claiming to pass for 29. 
Anne Francis, who played Powell's fiance, was 24, just two years older than Reynolds. In her career, Reynolds faced challenging times, including a period when she lived in her car, a Cadillac, out of necessity. However, she persevered and achieved significant success in her career. In What's the Matter with Helen, Reynolds starred alongside Agnes Moorhead and Shelley Winters, who together had a remarkable combined total of nine Academy Award nominations. Reynolds herself received one nomination for Best Actress in The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Moorhead had four nominations for Best Supporting Actress, and Winters, the only Academy Award winner among the three, had four nominations and two wins in the same category. These films and collaborations showcase Reynolds' talent and dedication to her craft, making her a beloved and respected figure in the industry. Debbie Reynolds co-starred with Carol Baker in the film How the West Was Won, and they formed a close friendship during production. At age 19, Reynolds played Kathy Selden in Singin' in the Rain, the same age as her daughter Carrie Fisher when she starred in Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope. This film is also featured in Leon the Professional, which starred Natalie Portman, who played Princess Leia's mother in Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones at age 19. Reynolds also appeared as herself in That's Entertainment, a film that owes much of its success to the editing of Bud Friedgen and David E. Blewett. They streamlined each number to a running time between one and three minutes, even in the case of the On the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe sequence, which was truncated from eight minutes to two minutes and 13 seconds. The team's work was integral to the anthology, as they were retained for That's Entertainment, Parkerman 2, and elevated to co-director status on That's Entertainment, Roman 3. Debbie Reynolds had a close friendship with Hugh O'Brien, even serenading O'Brien and his bride Virginia at their wedding in 2006. Reynolds is also well known for her role as Aggie Cromwell in Halloween Town, where she makes a grand entrance by floating down to the sidewalk with an umbrella reminiscent of Mary Poppins. Interestingly, Julie Andrews was initially considered for the role before Reynolds was cast. In the film What's the Matter with Helen, Reynolds played the character of Adele. An unscripted moment occurred when Shelley Winters, who played Helen, decided to kiss Adele on the lips after they came in from the rain. This unexpected moment was captured on film, but ultimately removed to avoid an R rating. Despite this, Reynolds' performance in the movie remains noteworthy. Debbie Reynolds, known for her role as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain, faced some challenges during filming. Gene Kelly, frustrated with Reynolds' inexperience, would take it out on Donald O'Connor instead. It was only later that Reynolds learned O'Connor had been acting as a whipping boy for Kelly. Reynolds was born in Texas to Owen and Maxie Harmon, who were originally from Kansas and Missouri, respectively, and singing in the ring. While Kathy's voice is dubbed over Lena Lamont's, ironically, Reynolds' own singing voice is not used in every scene. Betty Noyes dubbed Reynolds in Would You, and one portion of you are my lucky star. Despite these challenges, Reynolds' career continued to flourish, and she became a beloved figure in Hollywood. Her legacy lives on through her work, and the memories she created for audiences around the world. Debbie Reynolds had aspirations to become a physical education teacher before she was crowned Miss Burbank. One of her most memorable roles was as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain. Sadly, with Reynolds passing in 2016, Rita Moreno, who played Zelda in the same film, is now the last surviving star. Interestingly, Reynolds' singing of I Want to Be Loved by You in Three Little Words was actually dubbed by Helen Kane. Debbie Reynolds, known for her role as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain, was already an experienced actress when she landed the part at the age of 19. Prior to this, she had already starred in several films including June Bride, the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, and Mr. Imperium. Reynolds' journey to Hollywood stardom began when she won the Miss Burbank contest in 1948. She entered the contest on a whim, as everyone who participated received a silk scarf, blouse, and free lunch. The day after her win, she was offered a screen test by Warner Brothers despite the success she found in Singing in the Rain. Working with co-star Gene Kelly was not an enjoyable experience for Reynolds or her co-star Donald O'Connor. Both have spoken about Kelly's verbally abusive and tyrannical behavior on set. 
O'Connor has said that for the first several weeks, he was terrified of making a mistake and being yelled at by Kelly. Debbie Reynolds was a talented actress and musician, having played the French horn in high school and being a member of the Burbank Youth Symphony. She achieved a rare milestone in her career by dancing with both Fred Astaire and Jean Kelly on screen. Sharing this honor with a select group of actresses including Judy Garland and Sid Caris. In the star-studded film How the West Was Won, Reynolds held her own among a cast of prestigious actors, many of them Academy Award winners and nominees. As Lilith Prescott, she contributed to the film's critical and commercial success. The film's main cast included Henry Fonda, Carl Malden, Gregory Peck, James Stewart, John Wayne, Walter Brennan, Spencer Tracy, Carol Baker, Lee J. Cobb, Carolyn Jones, Robert Preston, Richard Widmark, Raymond Massey, Agnes Moorhead, Thelma Ritter, and Russ Tamlin. Reynolds's presence among these accomplished actors further highlights her talent and impact in the film industry. Debbie Reynolds faced challenges while filming Singing in the Rain. As Kathy Selden, she had to dance despite having little experience. Jean Kelly, her co-star, was tough on her during rehearsals. However, Fred Astaire, who was rehearsing nearby, noticed her crying and offered encouragement. In Singing in the Rain, Reynolds' singing was dubbed by Betty Noy, even though Reynolds herself dubbed Jean Hagen's character. This film also marked the last of Dick Powell's 58 feature film appearances, who played Susan Bogard Landis. He sang two songs for the movie soundtrack, but they were not used in the film. Instead, he danced in a pantomime segment imagined by Reynolds. During her highly publicized divorce from Eddie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds used interviews with reporters to gain public sympathy, often appearing with her two young children and diaper pins on her blouse. In the movie What's the Matter with Helen, Reynolds played a woman having a nervous breakdown, despite her own psychiatrist advising against it. She later stated that co-star Shelley Winters, who was actually having a nervous breakdown at the time, made the filming experience difficult for everyone. Regarding the film Singing in the Rain, Reynolds stated that making it and surviving childbirth were the two hardest things she had ever done. She was treated harshly by perfectionist co-star Gene Kelly, who later expressed remorse for his behavior. Debbie Reynolds, a highly acclaimed actress, made a foray into the hospital business in 1964. She purchased Oceanside Hospital in Oceanside Cop, for 1000 with the intention of transforming it into a profitable venture. In addition to her business pursuits, Reynolds had a successful film career. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in the musical The Unsinkable Molly Brown in 1964. She was one of 26 actresses to have ever been nominated in this category, joining the ranks of Julie Andrews, Barbara Streisand, and Meryl Streep. Reynolds also had a notable role in the film What's the Matter with Helen? in 1971, where she played the character Adele. She kept many of the props and costumes from the film as a memento of her time on set. Some of the other actresses who have received nominations in the musical category include Bessie Love, Grace Moore, Jean Hagen, Marjorie Rambo, Dorothy Dandridge, Deborah Kerr, Rita Mo Reno, Gladys Cooper, Leslie Ann Warren, Amy Irving, Nicole Kidman, Queen Latifah, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Renee Zellweger, Jennifer Hudson, Penelope Cruz, and Anne Hathaway. mother-in-law of Catherine Hicklin, played the role of Lilith Prescott in the film How the West Was Won. Her performance was notable, but there were widespread feelings that James Stewart was miscast, and some thought that Reynolds looked too old for the early scenes. 
Reynolds had a famous falling out with actress Elizabeth Taylor in the late 1950s when Reynolds' husband, Eddie Fisher, began an affair with Taylor and eventually left Reynolds to marry her. However, the two women reconciled and worked together on the made-for-TV movie, These Old Broads, in 2001, along with Shirley MacLaine and Joan Collins. The movie was written by Reynolds' daughter, Carrie Fisher. When they began working together, Taylor told Reynolds, I owe you a lot, to which Reynolds replied, I just got a lump in my throat when she said that. This moment marked a significant moment in their friendship, which had been strained for many years. Reynolds and Taylor's reconciliation was a testament to their ability to move past their differences and work together despite their past. Debbie Reynolds, despite her church's disapproval, pursued show business with her father's support, hoping to cover her college costs. Both her parents eventually came around, recognizing that the movies she'd appear in wouldn't involve any evil. Reynolds, proud grandmother, has two great-grandchildren Kingston Fisher Lord Rydell and Jackson Joanne Lord Rydell, born in 2020 and 2022, respectively. They are the children of her granddaughter Billy Lord and her husband Austin Rydell. In the film In and Out, Reynolds portrayed Bernice Brackett. Co-starring in the movie was Whoopi Goldberg, who made a cameo appearance. Five years prior, Goldberg had headlined Sister Act, a film penned by Paul Rudnick, who also wrote In and Out. Initially intended for Bette Midler, Sister Act underwent rewrites by multiple ghostwriters, including Carrie Fisher, Reynolds' own daughter. Debbie Reynolds demonstrated her acting skills in the film In and Out, appearing alongside fellow Oscar winners Kevin Klein and Whoopi Goldberg, as well as five Oscar nominees. Reynolds' performance was highly praised, earning her a Tony Award nomination for Best Actress in a Musical for her Broadway debut in the 1973 revival of Irene. She also had a successful one-woman review, Debbie, in 1976, and later replaced Lauren Buchholz in Woman of the Year in 1983. In addition to her work on stage and screen, Reynolds is known for her role as Aggie Cromwell in the Halloween Town film series. During filming, she would often introduce herself as Princess Leia's mother to the young actors, referring to her real-life daughter, Carrie Fisher, who played the iconic character in the Star Wars films. Reynolds' memorable performances have left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry and continue to be cherished by audiences of all ages. Debbie Reynolds is known for her role as Adele in the film, What's the Matter with Helen? The character was based on a story titled Best of Friends. Reynolds also starred as Kathy Selden in the classic musical Singin' in the Rain. She had never danced before, but learned quickly from co-star Gene Kelly, who she described as a perfectionist and disciplinarian. He commented on her hard work and ability to pick up complicated routines. In a later TV appearance on Love, American Style, Helene Winston and Sammy Lee Jones reprised their roles from What's the Matter with Helen as an overbearing stage mother and a precocious child performer. They interrupted a honeymoon and held an impromptu audition with Jones performing Animal Crackers in My Soup as Winston accompanied her on piano. This was a nod to Reynolds' role in the previous film. Debbie Reynolds was a dedicated member of the Thalians, an organization that aims to improve mental health treatment at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. She served as the president, with Ruta Lee as the chairman, and both have been actively involved for over 30 years. Reynolds is also remembered for her role as Aggie Cromwell in Halloween Town, which is an interesting coincidence as her late close friend, Agnes Moorhead, who was known as Aggie, played a magical grandmother on Bewitched. Furthermore, Reynolds had a successful music career with her recording of the title song from the film Tammy and The Bachelor becoming a number one hit in August 1957. The song even managed to knock Elvis Presley's teddy bear from the top of the charts, but was itself replaced a month later by Paul Anka's Diana. Debbie Reynolds, a well-known actress, had a close relationship with Elizabeth Taylor. She was even Taylor's matron of honor at Taylor's wedding to Mike Tutt. In addition to this, Reynolds was a dedicated grandmother to Billy Lurd. One notable achievement of Reynolds was the dedication of the Holland America Line cruise ship, the MS Veendam, in January 1996. This event showcased her popularity and influence in the entertainment industry. Reynolds' contributions to the entertainment industry were not limited to her own career, as she was also an important figure in the lives of her family members. 
her dedication to her craft, and her role as a grandmother were just a few examples of her impact on those around her. Overall, Debbie Reynolds was a respected and beloved figure in the entertainment industry with a career and personal life that left a lasting impact. Debbie Reynolds, born in Texas and raised in California, became well known for her role as Lilith Prescott in the 1962 film How the West Was Won. This role, where she played a poor young girl who later becomes a singer and seeks her fortune, was somewhat of a preview for her portrayal of the lead in the unsinkable Molly Brown two years later. Reynolds was a mother of two children, Carrie Fisher and Todd Fisher, whom she had with her ex-husband, Eddie Fisher. She completed her secondary school education in Burbank. In the unsinkable Molly Brown, Reynolds once again played a poor young girl who sings for a living, searches for gold, and dreams of marrying a wealthy man. This role further showcased her acting abilities and versatility. In addition to her acting career, Reynolds was a mother who raised two children while continuing to work in the entertainment industry. Her ability to balance her personal and professional life is a testament to her strength and determination. Throughout her career, Debbie Reynolds left a lasting impact on the film industry and will always be remembered for her memorable roles and contributions. Debbie Reynolds, known for her role as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain, was unexpectedly introduced to Gene Kelly as his leading lady by studio head Louis B. Mayer. Despite Kelly's initial disapproval, Reynolds, who considered herself a movie enthusiast with an extensive memorabilia collection, proved her worth. She even transformed her collection into a Las Vegas movie museum, which had to close down due to financial difficulties. And what's the matter with Helen? Reynolds played Adele, and bit player Yvette Vickers was instructed to dye her hair red to avoid competing with Reynolds' blonde appearance. Throughout her career, Reynolds faced challenges, including being hospitalized during Singing in the Rain due to exhaustion from Kelly's rigorous training. Despite these challenges, she remained passionate about her craft and continued to contribute to the film industry. Reynolds' impact on the movie world has been significant, and her legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors and movie enthusiasts. Her dedication, hard work, and love for movies have left a lasting impression on the industry and her fans. Debbie Reynolds, in the 1976 film That's Entertainment, Part Room 2, hosted a segment where the original Good Morning number from Singin' in the Rain was intended for inclusion. However, it was later replaced with Donald O'Connor's Make Him Laugh. The Good Morning number eventually resurfaced in the sequel film. Reynolds had also expressed interest in playing the role of Doris Mann in Postcards from the Edge, but Shirley MacLaine was ultimately cast for the part. In an interesting turn of events, Reynolds was scheduled to attend the funeral of her fellow Hollywood icon, Zaza Gabor, at the time of her death. Debbie Reynolds was an actress who amassed a large collection of Hollywood memorabilia, which she opened to the public near the Kodak Theater in April 22. The collection, which she preserved herself, includes over 3,000 costumes such as Carmen Miranda's turbans, a pair of Judy Garland's ruby slippers, John Wayne's guns, and Marilyn Monroe's iconic dress from the Seven Year Itch. Reynolds also produced the film What's the Matter with Helen? in 1971. She had a deal with NBC to produce a movie as part of her contract for her TV sitcom, and she invested 800000 of her own money into the production. She was drawn to the dramatic role and Henry Farrell's story outline. In addition to her work in film, Reynolds appeared in all four Disney Channel original movies in the Halloween Town series as Aggie Cromwell. She was one of only three actors to appear in all of the titles, alongside Judith Hogue and Joey Zimmerman. Reynolds' contributions to Hollywood as an actress and preserver of its history are noteworthy. Her collection and appearances in beloved films and TV shows have left a lasting impact on the industry and its fans. Debbie Reynolds, known for her role in Singing in the Rain, had her feet bleed from rehearsals with Gene Kelly, as revealed on the British game show Kai. In a shocking revelation, Reynolds' co-star Carrie Fisher shared that Kelly also French kissed Reynolds, causing her to vomit. Debbie Reynolds, in her role as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain, had a memorable experience when she stuck her gum on a ladder rung, causing Gene Kelly's toupee to get stuck during a take. This incident led to Kelly reprimanding her, and Reynolds never chewed gum again during filming. 
In the film How the West Was Won, Reynolds played Lilith Prescott and appeared in three of its five sequences alongside George Papar. Initially, Lilith was meant to drown in the river, but the character's significance in connecting the Prescott generations led to her remaining in the story, aging into an elderly lady in the film's conclusion. Reynolds' experience with Kelly on Singin' in the Rain was challenging, as Kelly's demanding nature brought her to tears. Although she acknowledged that the pressure helped her develop discipline, the two never collaborated again. Despite these challenges, Reynolds' performances in both films remain noteworthy and memorable. Debbie Reynolds, in her role as Kathy Selden in Singin' in the Rain, faced challenges when she had to learn dance routines with no professional training. Jean Kelly, a seasoned dancer, often belittled her, causing her to cry. Fortunately, Fred Astaire discovered her tears and offered to coach her, significantly improving her performance. In a memorable scene, Don, portrayed by Jean Kelly, mocks Kathy about her potential to play Shakespearean roles, including King Lear. Interestingly, in 2016 and 2019, Glenda Jackson, four years younger than Debbie, took on the role of King Lear on stage without the need for a beard. Reynolds' father introduced her to the world of beauty pageants at a young age. Wearing a mended bathing suit and her sister's high heels, she participated in a pageant, marking her first step into the world of entertainment. Debbie Reynolds had a memorable guest appearance on the sitcom Roseanne in 1988, playing Dan's mother, fresh out of the mental ward. During the filming of that episode, Reynolds and Roseanne had a playful wrestling match in the backyard, which resulted in Roseanne accidentally breaking one of Reynolds' ribs. Reynolds was not only an accomplished actress, but also had a passion for music. She was proficient in playing the French horn, bass, and violin. In her spare time, she even pursued fashion design. Born to a mixture of English, Scottish, Scots-Irish, and German ancestry, with some distant French roots, Reynolds had a diverse cultural background. Her heritage was a part of her unique identity and contributed to her successful career in the entertainment industry. In July 1997, Debbie Reynolds faced financial difficulties and filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection for her Las Vegas hotel. Despite this setback, Reynolds' career remained notable for her significant roles in film and theater. One of her most iconic performances was in the 1952 classic Singin' in the Rain, where she played Kathy Selden. Although she was initially not the first choice for the role, Reynolds' portrayal of Selden became a fan favorite. She was originally set to dance with Gene Kelly in the Broadway melody sequence, but her dancing skills were not up to par. Leslie Karen was the second choice, but she was unavailable, leading to Reynolds' casting. Reynolds also appeared in the 1997 film In and Out, directed by Frank Oz. Oz had previously worked with Reynolds' daughter, Carrie Fisher, in several films, including The Blues Brothers, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and The Last Jedi. Reynolds' granddaughter, Billy Lurt, also appeared in The Last Jedi. Overall, Debbie Reynolds' career spanned over six decades, and she left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Her talent and dedication to her craft were evident in every role she played, making her a beloved figure in Hollywood. We'd love to hear your memories and opinions about the talented Debbie Reynolds. What made her work so special to you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, please like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into the lives and work of the entertainers who have shaped the industry we know today. Together, let's celebrate the artists who have left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Your engagement helps us continue to create and share these valuable stories. Thank you.